I wanted to ask if you have already made plans for the masquerade. What? <laughs> Whoa, are you asking Rivian out? Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Chess Ablaze and today we are going to be starting with Lanias's route. So before we get started, I just want to say that I have already skipped all the stuff we have seen. If you have missed the first two routes that I have done already, the playlist is in the description where you can watch it. And yeah, so I'm just going to go straight into Lanias' route and see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, refined guest, we hope you have enjoyed His Highness's grand celebration so far. Tomorrow the festival will continue with new games and attractions and it is his majesty's sincere wish for you to delight in them all. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce a highly esteemed guest of honor who... They're gone! They've been stolen! What? A hysterical shriek suddenly interrupts the announcement. Moments later, a poorly, a poorly woman comes galloping to, down the stairs, her hands filling in the air wildly. My precious diamonds! I didn't expect that. Someone's things get to like stolen within the route. Okay. <laughs> and just like that, she promptly faints, wobbling over like a strictly unsound tower. The crowd gasps in unison. But luckily, someone nearby rushes to catch her before she topples down the stairs. Murmuring breaks out through the crowd, and patient and curious whispers filter around. One of the guards picks up the unconscious woman, the Duchess, and carries her back to the stairs, as another guard quickly follows behind. Scratching my head in puzzlement, I frowned at the now empty balcony for a moment before deciding to return to my chambers. But at that moment, sounds like we have a dastardly criminal on our hands. Never fear, for the Justicia will see this despicable thief rotting in a jail cell before the night is out. A confident theatrical voice suddenly booms out from nearby. Oh god, not this guy again! <laughs> I turn to see a tall, lanky man standing a few feet away, his arms raised triumphantly in the air. His, in his behavior incurs more than just a few curious looks from the dispatching uh, crowd, along with a few gasps and murmurs. Is that the Justicia? Is that really him? The one that keeps unraveling all those plots to sabotage the throne? Wait, 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 who is this guy? What is he, like a superhero or something? I think so. He's about as dramatic as you can get, but the man seems to always get the job done. Somehow. A couple next to me exchanges quick whispers, doubling into shared giggles at the end. Now that they mentioned it, I think I've heard quite a bit about this man before. The Justice ER is usually only supposed to make a final judgment in important trials, but apparently plays quite an active hand in investigations as well. If I recall correctly, Father had a burning hatred of him, and he was constantly remarked on how his showmanship made him unsufferable to deal with. Well, I can see how he's very dramatic for no apparent reason. The lovely Duchess will soon breathe easy once more. Begin a search of the castle at once! He points at the tip of his ornate uh, staff to the group of guards who have clustered nearby, and they all offer a hasty salute before heading off in various directions. In the meantime, a gaggle of young admirers start to congregate around the Justiciar, largely comprising of girls, but with the occasional boys sprinkled in there too. Oh god! <laughs> oh, won't you pretend I'm a criminal you're taking to court? <laughs> we all want to be jailed by you, Justiciar. Oh, the Justicia Raphael lets out a sing, uh, lets out a sing-song laugh, and shakes his hand dismissively before patting one lucky youth on the head. <laughs> oh, not tonight, my dears. My duty calls, and I would be remiss to leave it hanging. You know, I really did not expect Linares's route to be like this. <laughs> well, he's certainly capable of making quite a spectacle, given that. He'd be an excellent circus magician, but right now his loud voice is just giving me a headache. Around my temples, I turn and make my way through the mostly thin crowd, setting off towards the grand staircase. I trot up the stairs to the second level, making a beeline for my personal chambers. If I'm lucky, I can slip in beside before we have running into any guards and escape with some kind of bothersome search. In the hallway, I pass by a few guests also returning to the rooms, probably with a similar plan in mind. Then, a familiar well-dressed figure walking past catches my eye. Wait, it's a butler! Silas! Did you hear about the Duchess? Some sort of affair with the stolen diamonds? I don't really- Are you alright? 
What's wrong? Silas halts as soon as I speak his name. He blinks at me for a moment, then his eyes gradually shift to one side. Of course, sir. I did hear of the thievery. You're hiding yes. something again. Can't help but think he looks ever so slightly shaken. Most likely the news of someone being stolen has him feeling a bit uneasy. Servants probably get accused of that sort of thing all the time. Well, I'm sure it'll be resolved soon. The matter's in our capable hands, I'm sure. For some reason, my awkward attempt to try to put Silas at ease actually makes him ca crack a smile. I bet the slightly strained one. Undoubtedly, sir. I have no doubt that the matter will be thoroughly put to rest. Is it just me, or is there something of a strange edge to his words? Ugh, here I go again, reading too much into people's responses again. I really need to socialize more. Ahem, <clears throat> uh, of course. I'm off to my room then. Have a pleasant evening! I... wish you the same. What's up so with him? Oh, okay. We part ways accordingly, and I hurry around the corner towards my chambers. For whatever reason, a distinct feeling of apprehension is creeping up on me, although I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, there is a criminal running the loose in the castle now, so I don't think I'm unjustified in feeling a bit uneasy. But rather than being afraid of my belongings being nicked, I have a sense that something else is brewing, something far more unpleasant. Just father's paranoia wearing off on me, I suppose. Ah, you're usually right with these things. Sighing to myself, I step into the bedroom and close the door behind me, relishing the immediate sense of peaceful privacy that comes over me. My first stop is my bed, where I throw myself down. Somehow, I'm still exhausted, despite my early nap. All that socialization really drains a man, you know? Ugh, don't remember the bed being this lumpy. Something digs into my sides and beneath the cover is awfully hard and pointing from the part of the mattress. Annoyed, I slide back off the bed covers and pull the sheets, wanting to dislodge whatever is trying to impede my comfort. What? Is it the stolen items? There, lying on the bed, is a glittering necklace. Oh shit, I was right! Someone's trying to frame us! There, lying on my bed, is a glittering necklace bearing the largest, most beautiful diamonds I have ever seen. It takes a moment for my son brain to put two and two together. And then, when I remember the guards are probably still searching. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! I feel the blood draining from my face as I gulp heavily, rocking my dizzy head for what I, what I can possibly do. While well, my first instinct is to toss them out the window, I remember the various balconies visible from my own. If someone saw me, it'd be death sentence, and that perverted foreigner is probably lurking somewhere out there too. As I try to keep from hyperventilating and bite down one of my knuckles nervously, a face suddenly surfaces in my mind. Anias. It's true, he might not be believing at first, but I have a feeling he's one of the only few people who'd listen to reason. I better hurry though, because the last thing I want to hear is a knock on my door with these diamonds and still staring at me in the face. Why do these things always happen to me? I grab the diamonds and stuff them to my shirt, muttering to myself. Then, all but sprinting over to the door, I peek out into the hall to make sure no one's watching. I hasten to the corridor, trotting along while trying to act relatively normal. There's a slight problem I haven't previously considered. Where is Linaeus' room exactly? I did see him over in the spot before dinner. Somewhat desperately, I try to retrace my steps from earlier, winding through the halls at the fastest pace I can go without outright running. I pass a few guests and do my best to offer a natural smile, although I can't help but feel like my eyes are bugging out of my head. That and the burden of these diamonds against my chest feels like a thousand pound weight. And how on earth did the burglar deal with this sort of thing? I would crumble within minutes! When I get close to the same spot as I found the knives before, I glance around the various rooms, trying to find anything that resembles a name plaque or a telltale sign of his presence. Because of the use of their temporary lodging, though, the chambers are unmarked, save for the numbers, leaving me with next to no hints. Just as I'm about to give up and search somewhere else, instead... I already told the oh, there he is! ...that I'm looking for her ridiculous rocks. Now, get out of here before my temper really flares and I throw my tea into your insipid face. <laughs> He's so salty! <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I could certainly tell that voice from just about anywhere. Sure enough, a moment later, a door slightly down the hall suddenly flies open and the guard stumbles out a little frantically. Once he knows my staring, he quickly straightens his posture and turns down to march down the hallway, probably nursing the injuries that Linaeus' venomous words inflicted upon him. I wait for him to get out of sight before stepping up to the door, tentatively peering inside. What meets my gaze is a pair of narrowed, hawkish blue eyes behind lenses, boring holes into my skull. Do you care to explain what exactly you're doing? As much as I would love to entertain your inanity, Varison, 
I've got my hands rather full right now, you oh, see. Oh, I got my chest full right now, you see. When I hesitate and avert my gaze for a moment in response, Lenai seems to sense something wrong, because he suddenly changes his expression to a more curious one. I really wish I was the only one to pester you, but something far more serious than that, I'm afraid. Lenai presses his lips together tightly, pushing up his glasses with two fingers. A moment later, he impatiently waits for me to step further into his room. Are you waiting for the seasons to change, perhaps? <laughs> Stop standing around like a fool and tell me what the matter is. Yes, your testiness. <laughs> I step into Lonice's chambers, closing the door behind me. The room seems like something in between of a bedroom and an office, although I don't know if this is because Lonice is investigating or if he's addicted to his work that he requested before the party even began. I think it's both. I contemplated for a moment how to approach the subject, but considering how impatient and high strung the Inquisitor seems to be right now, it's probably best to get to the point. This is going to sound very strange and you're probably not going to believe me, but... Taking a deep breath, I reach into my shirt and pull out the glittering diamonds, holding them out to Linnaeus. His eyes go wide as saucers for a moment, and the look of shock on his face is the one I find amusing if not for the dire situation. I found these in my room not so long ago. Someone had put them under my bed sheets for whatever godforsaken reason. Now, as implausible as it may sound, I'm sure you realize it doesn't... It doesn't make a lot of sense for me to turn myself in as a thief if I actually stolen them, right? The nice expression gradually returns to a grin, solemn state, although now a crease of confusion lines in his brow. He reaches out to take the diamonds from my outstretched hands, examining them for several seconds. Soon after, though, he lets a, a long, long and distressed sigh, setting the necklace on his desk and rubbing his hand against his forehead. Thieves turning in stolen items to avoid suspicion is not unheard of, but I don't deem you clever enough for that. Thanks. <laughs> foolish enough to have actually stolen them, I suppose. His insult would have been normally scoured my mood, but right now I can only exhale the relief of the lack of suspicion in his voice. While I'm glad you were honest about where you found these, it complicates Yeah, because you still don't deal. know who did it. You'll have to be questioned in order to draw out any potential clues as to the thief's identity. And on a more unsettling level, the fact that these meddlesome rocks were in your room suggests someone was attempting to frame you. Which makes the matter stranger still. He glasses his hands behind his back up and paces a little, closing his eyes as if to try to make some sense of the puzzle before us. Well, I'll answer any questions happily. I have no desire to be caught up in any of this nonsense, and the sooner it's resolved, the better. And surely with our brave Grand Inquisitor on the case, things will be- will be over in no t- Alright here, men. Open the door, and let's continue our search- What? Uh -huh. Oh shit! But it's the Inquisitor! They, would they really search him? Suddenly, a loud voice echoes from the hallway. Then the door bursts open, and a few guards hustle inside. Oh god, this guy. Along with a tall, lanky man. Very sorry about this, old friend. But not even the Inquisitor is exempt from the room searches, uh, considering the gravity of the situation. But it's diamonds. It's not like no one died like in the other rooms. <laughs> like, what the heck? A look of absolute disgust slowly darkened Linnaeus' features as he stares at Raphael. I thought I'd seen the pinnacle of his iciness during the dinner with Franz, but this is far worse. How much hatred can one man even have? You'll be pleased to know, Justicia, that the diamonds have already been found. His voice dripping with contempt, Linnaeus holds up the necklace in one hand as, as if an attempt to throw it at the other man. In response, Raphael's brow abruptly lowers into a frown, his eyes narrowing in an intense suspicion. Oh, and just where might they have been found, my good Inquisitor? I reflexively grow tense, trying my hardest not to fidget in place or give in to the urge to run out the door. Considering the amount of guards around, though, I doubt that'd be a very successful plan. I spotted them tucked behind one of the king's favorite statues in the South Hall. Oh. It seems our thief lost his nerve rather fast. Wow, I didn't really think Linnaeus would actually do this. As, like, I know we're in his route, but like, considering how Linnaeus is, he's not, he, he doesn't deal with bullshit, you know? He kind of gets straight to the point. He doesn't like dance around things. So I figured he would say it's us, but he's saying he's taking us into custody rather than giving it to this guy. So that's interesting that he's covering for us. And also that's good because he believes us. To my surprise, Linnaeus rolls out a casual lie, sounding like it's so nonchalant and dismissive that you think he completely believes every word he's saying. 
He doesn't bat an eye, and it said stares flatly at Raphael all the while, who stares back with a skeptical raise of one eyebrow. Ha! Ah, very... Mm, he doesn't believe very him. interesting indeed. Quite a fortunate coincidence that you should be the one to find them. Raphael's lips curl into a challenging, provocative grin, while Linnaeus only glares back contemptuously, radiating such an icy aura that feels like the room just got a bit chillier. The tension quickly mounts into a second of silence that follow, and both the guards and I glance between the two men in, in anticipation. Okay, this is awkward. And then... Inquisitor! Inquisitor, it's terrible! The Duchess has- What? Oh, Arden! A familiar red-haired figure comes all but flying into the Linnaeus' room. If it wasn't already cramped before, it certainly is now. My shock to see Arden appear out of the blue, however, is uh, magnified by how distressed his normally cheerful features look. I can immediately tell it's something very serious, and I get uncomfortable feeling that my earlier apprehension is about to be justified. The Duchess. She's been murdered. Poisoned. Poisoned in her very own room. Whoa! Whoa! A deafening silence sweeps through the chamber. No one dares to move or breathe, and it feels like uh, feels like time momentarily grinds to a halt. <clears throat> the Inquisitor and the Justiciar both stare at Arden for a little while before their their gazes flick back to each other. Arden seems to notice me a moment later, and he looks over in my direction with eyes blinking wide in surprise. I give him a helpless shrug. As horrible as it is, I'm almost thankful that the attention has been drawn away from the stolen diamonds. Maybe it'll be insensitive. These two work together rather than against each other. Relay to the captain of the guard that I want her room preserved and cordoned off from entry. Find out who visited her chambers today and detain all of them for questioning. It's Linnaeus who breaks out the silence first, his brisk and cool words cutting through the air like shards of ice. In response, Arden quickly dips his head in acknowledgement, his lips pressed together in a solemn line. Understood, sir. Oh, and do your best to keep the guests from learning about this matter. I know your loquacious inclinations will make that difficult, but keep in mind your salary will suffer under the weight of every unfortunate rumor. Okay, don't threaten Arden, okay, Linnaeus, calm down. Linnaeus' threat doesn't seem lost in Arden, who swallows hard and offers another hasty nod. I guess the Inquisitor's office has some weight with the Royal Guard, too. Poor Arden. With that, he makes a quick retreat from Lenaeus' room and thudding off his footsteps soon disappears into silence. Now, if you see fit to cease leaving your muddy footprints all over my fine carpet, <laughs> so mad. that would be marvelous. All eyes return to Lenaeus, who seems markedly more displeased and ruffled than he did before. Need I repeat myself? Out, I say, out! Okay, hey! The guard of all the- uh, the guards all quickly stiffen attention and shuffle out the hall, despite apparently being under Raphael's command. Raphael himself, however, lingers for a few moments longer and lets out a s slight scoff, shaking his head. Very well, very well! The plot thickens! Now a murderer must be brought to justice! Who is this guy?! Suspicious circumstances- Get out! <laughs> I would like to remind you, Justicia, that this crime is currently under my investigative authority. After the culprit is found, I will gladly hand him over to your manicured claw. <laughs> Narrowing his eyes, Raphael squints at Linnaeus for a few moments at his reply. Can't help but notice the resemblance in their sharp, hawkish expressions, though whether it's due to their similar positions or something entire or something else entirely, I can't say for sure. Wait, are they related? That's true, their eyes do look similar. They're related, aren't they? <laughs> we'll see about that, won't we, Inquisitor? Good evening. With that, he flourishes his cape and swivels around. But for a moment, our eyes meet. The corner of his mouth curled provocatively upward, and he reaches up to tip his hat to me. His jade eyes sparkle with a slight light. Okay? And then, as if nothing happened, he turns back and strides out into the hall with a theatrical flair. Come, my friends. We have work to do. All right. <laughs> as the bustling sound of Raphael and his guards gradually fade down the corridor, I clear my throat a bit awkwardly and turn towards the door. Well, I'll leave you to your work then. If any more expensive jewelry shows up in my bedroom, I'll let you know. Just as I start sliding to closer to the threshold... Wait. 
I freeze, all of it cringing at being called back so close to my escape. Ugh, I should have expected he remembered that business about the questioning. I was a fool to think that I could invade it. But when I turn around to face Linnaeus once more, his expression has ex unexpectedly grown a little hesitant, even uncertain. I wanted to ask if you have already made plans for the masquerade. What? <laughs> Whoa, are you asking Rivian out? Whoa, I did not expect- Where were we- <laughs> Lenice has some tiring, doesn't he? We're in the middle of a murder investigation. He's like, hey, you going in with anyone to the ball? No? <laughs> Made plans? My confused reply makes him quickly return to a scowl. Although this one's a little more impatient than angry. Yes, for the dance. Do you have- uh, You know. A date? A prior engagement? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Am I misreading things? Or is he trying to suggest what I think he is? This night just keeps getting more bizarre by the second. Uh, no. I haven't made any plans. To be honest, I almost forgotten about it. Linnaeus seems relaxed slightly at that, reaching a hand up to adjust his glasses with a sublime, a sublime confidence fast returning. <laughs> this is so funny. In that case, why don't we attend together? I have a feeling that with all these despicable acts occurring, something will inevitably take place on the final day of the celebration. So keeping an eye on the ball would be proof. Just say you want to go out with Rivian, Linnaeus! <laughs> While I'm admittedly stunned, I find it hard to say no for a number of reasons. Not to mention the prospect of Linnaeus dancing is quite comical appealing. Well, it's impossible to turn down an invitation from the Grand Inquisitor, isn't it? I think we can work something out. Oh my god, he said yes! <laughs> my mildly coil response makes him blink in his surprise for the briefest of moments. Soon after, the corners of his mouth turn upwardly slightly, and his strained brow softens a little. Good. Perhaps it will be an enjoyable droplet in the sea of pain that this celebration has become. <laughs> the atmosphere suddenly feels a little more intense, maybe even awkward, but hearing something other than the cold remark from the frigid man tickles me for some reason I can't really explain. Now. Enough chatting. Quit distracting me and go skitter back off to your room. Whoa, Lanias, whoa there! <laughs> he soon shoes me off and I make a graceful retreat before he starts yelling again. As I leave though, it feels like his eyes are following me. A piercing stare palpable, even when I'm not looking at him directly. I return to my room far less worried than I left it, strolling through the halls with a sense of great relief after dumping my necklace onto Lanias. That's not to say, however, that my sense of apprehension is completely gone. After all, I still don't know how the gems got into my room to begin with, or who put them there, and why. Wait, could it be Silas? I'm not saying Silas did it, because so far in the other routes, he wasn't really directly involved in anything, he just knew stuff. So could it be someone told him to put the necklace in our room? Because when we approached him, he was just kind of like awkward with us, and he's usually not like that. So maybe it could be him. And the Duchess's murder feels like far too often of con coincidence to be unrelated to the thief of her necklace. Maybe it was a distraction just so that they can kill the lady uh, while everybody was looking for the necklace. Until the culprit is caught by Linnaeus, that means the assassin is running around somewhere, and if that doesn't give my man goosebumps, I don't know what would. The warmth of my chambers makes me makes a sense of drowsiness quickly creep up on me, and after undressing and grooming myself a little, I waste no time in heading over to my bed. Just to be sure, I pat down the covers in case there were any other valuable things hidden inside them, but to my relief and maybe slight disappointment, there's nothing else. Just as well, I suppose. I curl under the sheets and close my eyes with a long yawn, the worries and stress of the night still clouding the back of my mind. My, I'll certainly have some tales to tell about this damn party when it's all over, and with any luck, nothing else too terrible will happen in the next few days. Wishful thinking, maybe, but a man's allowed to dream. My internal clock nags me for to get out of the uh, under the covers, but I immediately refuse. It's too damn early. Damn it. Ugh, fine. I throw the sheets off vehemently, annoyed not being able to peacefully drift back to sleep. As my bleary eyes adjust to the sunlight, I can gauge from the sun's brightness as probably mid-morning. Luckily, it looks like a beautiful day outside, so I can probably enjoy myself quite a bit out in the festival. That doesn't assuage the fact that I'm still very much not a morning person, and I feel like death as I drag out myself out of bed. I put my clothes on, probably missing a few buttons on my shirt in the process, but still managing to look at least decently presentable. The prospect of food has me decently excited, though, and I don't dawdle any longer in my room before heading out into the hall. 
The cheerful sounds of the people chattering both nearby and the main hall streamed through the corridor, making for a pleasant ambience, even though I'm very much not a per people person. People like dogs, you know, as long as they're just passively doing their own thing a good distance away and not jumping all over me, I have no problem with them. <laughs> I hurried through the corridor and in the direction of the lower level, emerging onto the crowded balcony. After I descended the stairs, I stood to make my way towards the main exit. My eyes were suddenly drawn out to a pair of contrasting figures nearby. A tall, well-dressed man and a little girl, Silas and Hazel. After I look over into the direction for a few moments, Hazel noticed me and jumps excitedly with a happy wave to beckon me over. The prospects of socialization never has me brimming with excitement, but I'll admit these two seem to be the, some of the most decent people I've met so far. The fact that Hazel's a child doesn't mean she's discounted, you know. Aw, that's nice. <laughs> Hello, hello, if this isn't everyone's favorite little maid and her butler's sidekick, what are you two up to today, hmm? Hazel giggles and looks up at Silas, who seems only vaguely amused by my greeting. Hello, sir. Silas wanted me to help him with his duties today, so I'm doing lots of important things. Good for you, Hazel. Huh, is that so? I'm sure you'll definitely outshine his performance. He might even lose his job to you, really. That is most hurtful, sir. Although I will admit that Hazel has a most enviable work ethic. He gives me a light smirk, glancing down at the girl and offering a light pat to her head. His behavior seems more relaxed than last night, but I can't help but wonder what that was really about. And even now, his eyes look particularly watchful, scanning occasionally around the room more keenly than mirrors about they're looking to be of help to any guests. Exactly! That's why I'm like, did he put the necklace there? Maybe I should try to get him alone at some point, just to assuage my curiosity. Although, he doesn't seem like a very type to be very open about that sort of thing. Anything exciting happening in either of your lives? Or perhaps you're privy to some fun rumors floating around? Hazel pursed her lips together in response, her eyes flicking up to the ceiling in thought while she plays with one of her ribbons in her hair. Well, I saw a lot of guards today. They were asking people questions and it looked really serious. Oh, and there was this big tall man with them. With a really fancy oh, he's talking with the voice. just the CR. Circus magician? Well, that's ex that sounds exactly like Hazel. You shouldn't talk about the Justicia like that. He's a very well respected man, you know. I'm starting to suspect the bad guy in this verse is, is the is Raphael, the Justiciar. Like he has something to do with this, and maybe he's using Silas. This is just a prediction. I don't really know, but he's using Silas in order to get you know to the Duchess. But his reasoning behind it, I don't know why you would kill that lady. Is it to like get back at like Linnaeus or something? Because there's some history between those two. Silas cuts in quickly to reprimand Hazel, his tone sounding a little sharper than usual. Oh, sorry. I'm sure he's a very nice man, just like Sir Rivian. You're too kind, Hazel. I'm not sure how I feel about being compared to the Justiciar, though. Now that I think about it, isn't it a little strange that Raphael is going around investigating? After all, I thought Linnaeus was in charge, and it certainly seems like he has no intentions of working with the Justiciar, whom he clearly doesn't hold much affection for. Are you going out to the festival, sir? I wish I could see it again, but I have to stay with Silas. Well, if you're a good girl today, I don't cut and don't cause any unwarranted mischief, then I'll take you to the festival tomorrow. How does that sound? Silas' so expression shifts slightly to my at my offer, although a faint look of concern that enters his gaze is probably due to something other than Hazel's mischief-making inclinations. Yes, please. I'd love to. Vivian is the best, isn't he, Silas? He certainly is, Hazel. What is up with Silas, Nick? An uneasy Wayne smile tugs on his lips, and I feel like something rather amiss with him today. I hope my own paranoia isn't getting the better of me. Excellent! I'm off for now, then. This ain't of too much trouble, you two. I'll try my best. <laughs> okay. Chuckling at Hazel's enthusiastic cry to me as I leave behind them, I finally head out into the castle grounds, basking in the warmth of the morning sun. The second day of the outdoor festival seems even more crowded than the first, with a plethora of guests swarming around to many stalls. I merge my way through the sea of fancy dresses and dashing summer suits, strolling along with the flow of people and pursing various words offered by the merchants. A wine stand catches my attention along the way, of course it does, and I happily take a little glass to brighten my mood. As I walk, I suddenly spot a familiar crop of red hair not too far off. Arden! Ugh, head down, walk fast, maybe you won't see me. 
I managed to escape without being noticed, heading further along the festival main road, and I let out a please sigh of relief. Oh god. Hold on. Is that Franz over there? Is everyone I don't want to see out a mess today or something? Next you know, that woman from yesterday will- Oh, you? Is that my little cutie? <laughs> everyone- everyone Rivian hates is just around him. Rivian? Oh shit. Why me? <laughs> Crying out to the cruel gods, I dash off into the crowd, pushing aside shoulders and squirming through a couple holes to make my escape. I just want to enjoy a quiet festival, damn it! Luckily, after I escape for the second time, I don't see anyone else I recognize coming to torment me. However, my glass is now empty, my feet are a little sore from running, and I'm feeling a bit claustrophobic from how many people there are around. Ooh, look for a bench, keep walking. Don't think looking for a bench is really gonna benefit us, because I feel like if we stay in- he's, he's trying to escape and be alone, right? He wants to just enjoy the festival by himself. If we look for a bench, I'm pretty sure Franz is gonna find him, <laughs> so let's just keep walking. Deciding to loop around and return to the main part of the festival, I stick around the road, hopeful that all those unpleasant near encounters from earlier don't repeat themselves. Thankfully, it seems like I've successfully escaped. For now, anyway. In my head, I start to make idle plans for the rest of the day, wondering if I should pay attention to visit the gardens or maybe see if there's a library in the castle I can pursue. Ah, oh shit. Medicine. It's glasses! I should have expected to see you here. I was absorbed in my own thoughts that I didn't even notice the man casually falling into steps beside me. How long has he been walking there? Linnaeus? Why are you at the festival? I thought you were in the middle of an investigation. I stopped him by tracks to stare at him in surprise, and he halts in front of me. The dark, brooding expression on his face indicate quite clearly that something's wrong. I've... I've been taken off the case. What? The king ordered it directly. It's that bitch Raphael, isn't it? Why would it? What? He stares gloomily to one side, looking the most distressed I think I've ever seen him before. What? But you're the Inquisitor. Why would he take you off the case? It was that damn Justicia. Below me in rank, but always trying to make me seem like a fool. I know he said something about me to his majesty, that infernal pompous gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> For once, his icy glare is focused on something other than me, and said focus so intently on the patch of grass that I swear I can almost see it withering under his gaze. I'm not sure what to say to console him or why I feel the need to console him in the first place, but we are at a festival, so maybe he can take his bite off of the unpleasant situation? Well, why don't you see it as an opportunity? After all, you must be hard at work for most of your waking hours. Relax a little, you know, relish in the joys of life! His eyes flick back over to me, narrowing in a mixture of irritation and skepticism. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? Unhand me! I am a man who prefers to work, rather than waste my time with frivolous ah! <laughs> Since his shoulders are too high up for me to place an arm around them, I grab a hold of his wrist instead, pulling him back to the crowd towards the festival stalls before he can finish his annoyed response. He stumbles alongside me, finally matching my pace somewhat reluctantly. Aww, like, <laughs> Raven just like, come on. Why were you even out here anyway if you didn't intend to enjoy yourself at the festival? Sounds a little fishy if you ask me. I was trying to find the king's foreign advisor in hopes that she could help me remedy this situation. Don't you dare imply I was planning on drowning myself in this, this swamp of excessive leisure. Yeah, right, you're, we're probably gonna go look for, like, wine or something. <laughs> I can't tell but snicker at how uptight and offended Linnae sounds at the prospect of having even a little break. He really must be addicted to his work. It's impressive though, probably not overly healthy. I'm going to force you to have fun, whether you like it or not! Don't be so ridiculous, Madison. Oh my god. Linnae is fronts at me with a disapproving push upwards with his glasses, and I ignore his protest to pull him into the middle of the festival anyway. The first stop has to be food. It's because it's easy to be cranky when you're hungry, but on a full stomach, everything suddenly seems much rosier. Even to Linnaeus, probably. So, what do you like to eat? Vegetables? Does your diet consist of the pure broccoli, perhaps? That would be why you're so full of shit. Him. Yes. I try to maintain a balanced regimen. <laughs> oh my god. I do indulge in sweet things, however. They are most often fruit. Nature's candy, it is Oh, so he's one of those people. <laughs> Well, there's no surprise there, really. 
Armed with a new knowledge, I drag Linnaeus towards the little market stall of a man making fresh desserts. I lean in to whisper my request to him and pass over some coins, and he quickly sets out of whipping something up. Linnaeus seems thoroughly puzzled as he gazes down at me, those hawk-like eyes blinking skeptically. Just exactly what do you think you'll- huh? As the vendor hands a bowl over to me, I shove it to Linnaeus' arms. It's full of fresh fruit, drizzled with chocolate and crumbled sweet biscuits. Very thoughtfully, the dessert maker stuffs two spoons inside. I grab one of them, scoop up the fr a few fresh berries and half of a biscuit, and then force it into Lenai's mouth before he has a chance to do anything. We're feeding him! Mm. 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 Uh, at first, he chews with annoyance, but his icy expression starts to suddenly thaw into something be uh, that betrays a certain enjoyment. This is... This is quite good, actually. Are we just gonna spend his entire route trying to, like, make him chill because he's so angry all the time? <laughs> Isn't it? You have to indulge every now and then, you know? Otherwise, you forget what the sweetness of life can really be like. As much as he tries to pretend to be reluctant, it's clear that Linnaeus' mood is brightening a little with every bite he takes. We walk along together, each taking occasional spoonfuls of the tasty fruit dish while heading into the part of the festival with less edible wares. I notice Linnaeus' eyes constantly taking in the surrounding with a keen look of wariness, but he also seems a bit more at ease than he was earlier. Although he's certainly out of his element, while I pull him along for the vendors or attractions next, it's rather trying to see cold exterior shifting into something slightly more gentle. You must really never have a moment to relax, huh? Well, I guess I don't usually do this sort of thing either, but I can imagine what it must be like to spend all of your days and nights hard at work without a second thought for so much as an occasional dessert or leisurely stroll. Also because he, his job is like directly working for the king and you can tell this guy's a, uh, like a workaholic. <laughs> Explains why he's so non- no nonsense, I guess. He probably expects everyone to be so dedicated to what they do as he is. At one point during his impromptu escapade, and a thought suddenly occurs into my head and I pull an ice sleeve to get his attention. You don't already have a mask for the masquerade, do you? We'll both need one, you know. I bite my tongue almost immediately after I speak. He said that the other night that the reason, the only reason he wanted to go to the masquerade was for the investigation, but if that has been cancelled... I suppose you're right. He still wants I'd to go with us. I'd get something plain and simple instead of overly gaudy, though. To my surprise, he replies back thoughtfully, rather than giving me a scornful retort as I expected. He has forgotten his words earlier, or he does really intend for us just to go dance for a date? As I puzzle over the situation, we come to a stop in front of a stall selling extravagant masses. I scan over the shelf for something that catches my eye, a bit overwhelmed about how many different options there are. It's hard to laugh at how out of place the tall, stiff Linnaeus looks among the plethora of mostly young girls at the stall, cooing over the sequence and sparkling finishes over various masks. Soon I find a pretty one that tickles my fancy, and after showing it to Lenai several different masks and trying to figure out what he likes, he finally begrudgingly picks out one that I offered him and purchased it. I suppose that means he must find it less objectionable than the rest. As we head off into another part of the festival, however, I can't help but notice the corners of Linnaeus' mouth are actually slightly turned upwards. He's smiling! <laughs> it's strange to see him so deep lines in his forehead somewhat relaxed, but it serves to make him look even more his age, rather than a cranky old man. You should smile more often, you know. You almost look cute. I beg your pardon. I am not smiling, and I most certainly am not cute. <laughs> I'm gonna love this route, I already know. <laughs> he says while turning his face away to hide the almost indefinite, definitely a smile. Okay guys, I'm gonna end the video here. I can I can already tell it's like, this is definitely gonna be something involving the Raphael. He has some relation to uh, Linnaeus, whether they're relatives or like old enemies or something. Because he did say, Rivian did say the way that their eyes look is kind of similar. So I'm getting the fact that maybe they're like brothers or something. And just like, you know, brothers who are always fighting each other. But it could be just like they're old enemies or something like that. So I just don't understand why the king would pick that guy over Linnaeus to investigate the murder. But whatever. Um, other than that, it's nice to see Linnaeus like smiling. <laughs> that was adorable. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens uh, in the next episode. Just let me know in the comments what you guys think of this route so far. 
And thank you once again to Archit Games for sending me a game key to play this game. And if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you would like to help support the channel on Patreon, the link is in the description. You can also support the channel for free with cockbox.com slash a girl and a game. All you have to do is make an account, open it up on your phone, download the games on the page, play them, and then you can donate real money to the channel, which will help me continue this series and continue the channel overall. So yeah, I'm excited to see what Linnaeus' room is going to be. I thought it was going to be boring because he was just like, oh, we stole a necklace, like, that's it. But someone's dead now, so that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Um, um, uh, this is, uh, are we on the floor? Wait, I thought we were on the bed. Okay, we're on the floor for some reason, but... He found his tongue wandering inside her mouth, exploring slowly as she... <laughs> I'm sorry, let me do that again. He found his tongue wandering in her mouth, 